Are you confused to know if that person is sent by God or not? Are you sitting over there a lot of times like, yo, I wonder, I want to know, is this person really sent by God? Did God send this person to me? Well, guess what? Today I got five signs they are not sent by God. That's right, five signs they are not sent by God, and you'll know for a fact that they are not sent by God. The first sign is they pull you away from God. That's right, they pull you away from God. If you notice, this person comes into your life, yeah, they talk about God sometimes, yeah, they go to church, yeah, they go to Bible study, yeah, they read their Bible, yeah, they got some Christian friends, but for some reason, for some reason, it doesn't look like they're following God, or for some reason, it seems like they're doing the same things that you used to do in your past. You know, like when you used to lie or treat people wrong or be careless and not think of others, right? Not being loving, not, not sacrificing yourself, trying to get revenge, treating people wrong, being petty, being evil to them, right? And just doing other things outside of the will of God or outside of the ways that you know God would want you to act and be to other people, right? You notice that for some reason, you're doing these things over with this person in your life. You're going back to your worldly ways, right? You're going back to doing the things that you used to do, right? And it seems like this person don't even care. That person ain't even saying like, yeah, you know, you know, like we might need to do that different or what would God want us to do? Or they're not even trying to help you when it comes to God, right? Because when it comes to God, we gotta hold each other accountable. That's because we love each other, keep each other on this same path. But if you notice this person ain't never really thinking about God, this person is never trying to walk in that path, it just seems like nothing has changed, right? They go to church, but they don't act in the way that God needs them to act. And they don't help you even in that area, right? Matter of fact, they pull you back to that way instead of pulling you closer to God, right? You notice that you don't even think about God that much. You, you notice that you don't even hear this person mentioning God as much or as they first did when you first met them. Things seem like a more of a slippery slope, right? Well, that's one sign that that person is not sent by God because God's spirit is in a person. Just like when Jesus said he was going to send that spirit, when he sends the spirit, you'll know. Because when he sends a person to you, he's sending the spirit that he has in him with that person. So if it don't match up, if it don't align, if it don't point back to God, then guess what? That's a sign they are not sent by God. Sign two is gonna be if that person is still having sex. And I know y'all over there like, what, still having sex? I know some of y'all are like that, but I know some of y'all are like, yeah, 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 right? That's because you know now, now that you've got into this relationship with God, that you not having sex. You made that commitment. You made that a goal in your life to abstain until marriage, right? Or you've come up to the agreement that you are trying now to abstain from having sex. But for some reason, this person has come into your life and they're like, I don't know if I want to stop having sex. Or they're doing things that seems like it's pulling towards sex, right? Like they texting you sexual messages, they're trying to touch you all the time. They haven't even said anything about abstaining, right? That's something to look out for because I know a lot of people Specifically, a lot of women tell me that men don't say much about, you know, abstaining till having sex. Or they'll say, I'll abstain for you. Understand this too. If a person says they'll abstain for you, that's not truly abstaining until marriage because they can't abstain for you. They have to have something higher, something stronger to hold on to, which is God, not you. You are not their God. God has to help them with that. But Specifically, if this person has not said that they are abstaining, if this person has not made a commitment, a covenant to not having sex until marriage or trying to not have sex and walk this abstaining journey, then guess what? That person ain't sent by God because what do they look like coming into your life, right? And stopping you or pulling you back into this sexual act, right? Which will definitely pull on your relationship, which will definitely damage or lessen your relationship with God. It'll pull you away from God, not pull you to God. You know they ain't, God didn't send them. That doesn't mean that they don't have a relationship with God. It just means that God didn't send them because remember, he sends his spirit. His spirit tells us what to do. His spirit helps us, right? It doesn't worsen us. It doesn't hurt us. It helps us to become stronger 
in our spirit towards God. It helps us to, be to become stronger in our relationship with God. So if he sent that person, he sent his spirit within that person to be a part of your life. So again, if they're still having sex, God did not send that person because he don't want you to stay on that path and he don't want you to fall off the path you have already chosen to abstain. Sign number three is no conviction. No conviction. God did not send that person to you if they have no conviction. Now you may not know what conviction is. Conviction is when someone feels corrected from a wrong they have done, this person feels convicted right? To do the right thing, right? So if this person doesn't feel any guilt towards nothing they did, if this person never looks at themselves, if they don't take accountability, if they don't look into the mirror, if they don't sit there and think, you know what? I probably shouldn't have did that. You know what? God, I apologize, God. If they're, if they're not thinking, you know what? God does tell me not to do that. I don't know why I did that. That, that probably was wrong. I should definitely correct that right? If they're not thinking of others in order to do what is right towards that person, God did not send them. This person has to have conviction because I've been in relationships where I'm sitting there like, yo, like she don't care about nothing. Like, like how does she not know that she did that wrong to that person? How is she not looking at what she did? How is she not caring about how this affects that person? right? A person has to have conviction. If that person is just like never thinking about what they did wrong, that person is never wrong. That person never looks in the mirror. That person never corrects themselves, right? Never humbles themselves. They don't have no conviction. And guess what? If they are like that, God did not send them because the spirit corrects you. The spirit convicts you. It doesn't condemn you, but it convicts you to do what is right because we walk in righteousness, the path of righteousness, the path of love, right? And love is when you sacrifice yourself. Love is when you give to others. So are they convicted to be corrected, to do what is right? Are they convicted to help someone else? Are they convicted to love, to give God's love? Or do they not care? Is it not their fault? They never did anything wrong. Because if, it, if it's never their fault and they never did anything wrong and they never look in that mirror and they never apologize and they never do any of these, they do any of these things for other people, then guess what? God did not send them to you because that is not his spirit. That is not who he is. That is not a part of the fruit of the spirit. So that's number three, no conviction. That person has to have conviction to have been sent by God. Sign number four is, but you do not see the fruit of the spirit in their life. And we're looking at Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. And we know that the Bible says that, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So does that person exhibit any of that fruit? Does that person exhibit or produce? Can you see patience in this person's life? Now, again, again, we are not perfect, right? Because Rudy, your boy Rudy, definitely got to work on his patience. That's one, one of the fruit of the Spirit God is definitely working on in me, right? But do you see any of the spirit, right? The person doesn't have to be perfect in any of these things because only God is perfect. God is love. God produces these fruits to the full. But can you see any of it? Can you see it at all? Can you see it working? Can you see it being produced in their life? Can you see them trying to walk in the spirit, right? Are they trying to be kind to others? Are they trying to be faithful? Can you see any faithfulness in their life? Whether it's to a friend, whether it's to a coworker, whether it's to you, whether it's to their family, whether it's to their child, whether it's to their job, their career, their business, their purpose, anything. Do you see kindness? Do you see joyfulness? Do you see peace? Do you see goodness? Do you see love? Do you see any of these fruit being produced? Do you see God coming out of this person? Can you look at Jesus and then look at him? Can you look at Jesus and then look at her and see any of this? Can you see this person trying to exhibit, trying, at least trying to exhibit any of this fruit? Can you see this person going back to God to work on them, to strengthen them in this area? They have to have a passion to want to produce this. They have to have a passion to want to exhibit Jesus's love, Jesus's qualities, Jesus's characteristics. They have to have a passion for others to see God in them. Sign five is they lack good character. 
Now, this can go for sign four, which is the fruit of the spirit, right? You can see good character through that, but they lack it. So if this person lacks good character, if you don't see good character in their lives, if you don't see them being respectful, if you don't see them being kind, if you don't see them keeping their word, if they are not dependable, if they are not caring, if they are not compassionate, if they are not loyal, if this person is not trustworthy, if you cannot believe what they say, if you cannot depend on what they say, if you don't see that they mean what they say, if you don't see that this person keeps their word in any way, they only talk, they sound good, they, they, might be, they might be calm, they might be soft, they might be patient, but can their actions back this up? Because they have to have integrity and good character is seen by what you do, it means, does your words align up with what you do? Can you see good character? Can you see that this person is dependable? Can you see this, right? And I always say, and the Bible says, you need to see these things through what they do for others. Because again, a person can trick you when it comes to you. It can feel good because the devil makes you feel good, right? The devil can do all of these things and make you feel good. But a person's true character will be seen by what they do for others. It'll be seen by what they do for someone they do not care about, someone they do not know, someone off the street, someone on the corner, someone at the restaurant, right? Someone at the store, right? What are they doing to those people? To be honest, you could be mad at your family and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the spirit moves in you to correct you and to help you to move in a loving way, right? A good, good character shows up all the time, right? It's something that doesn't change. Even when it's hard to do, it doesn't change. They're not choosing who to do this for. I'm not gonna tell you, tell you the truth and then lie to them, right? That means if they have good character, they're gonna tell you the truth, the person that they love and the person that they don't know, they're still gonna tell them the truth. They're still gonna help this person they don't know, just like they'll help you. That's what good character shows. That is what integrity does. It is not, I do this for you and don't think about doing it for them. That is not good character. That is the lack of good character. That means somebody is faking something for you because the truth will be revealed through their whole state, through what they are doing in general. A person has to be this, right? I'm not gonna choose to give you love and not choose to give it to them, right? You have to be this thing. So if they lack good character, God did not send them because God is good character. God is integrity. God fills those who has his spirit with integrity. Just read the book of Job. Trust. He definitely speaks about integrity towards Job. All right. So that's sign number five, the lack of good character. The bonus is extreme selfishness. Now I'm saying extreme selfishness because, you know, we are all selfish in the world. We was born into sin, right? And sin is selfish. But I'm saying extreme selfish because extreme selfishness is someone who, who, who hardly looks at themselves, someone who hardly thinks of others, right? It's hard for you to even see or pinpoint or remember when you could see this person helping someone or thinking of them or being considerate of them or being there for them in any type of way, right? If this person is extremely selfish, they never look in the mirror. They are never willing to go outside of themselves for someone else. You probably never even heard them apologize. Do they apologize? Think about that. Think about that. The person that you're thinking about, did God send them? Have they ever apologized to you? Have they ever apologized to someone else? Have you ever heard them say that someone should apologize? Do you think and know for a fact that this person is caring? Do they think about others? Because a person who is sent by God has God's spirit. And we know that Jesus is caring, loving, sacrificial. Do they sacrifice themselves in any type of way, right? And remember, it has to be more than less because God's spirit is loving, caring, sacrificial, all of these things that are willing to give to others. And if you are selfish, that means you are self-absorbed. That means you are self-centered. You're more towards yourself than you are of others. They have a hard heart, not a soft heart. So if they are extremely selfish, if you cannot think to yourself that this person is willing to do for others, this person is willing to put themselves to the side for others, this person is willing to give, to think of others, to apologize, to help, then guess what? They are not sent by God because God's spirit is selfless. Jesus gave up himself. Jesus sacrificed himself. 
Jesus wanted to give to others. Jesus put himself to the side. Jesus is the spirit and then he sent his spirit. And when his spirit is sent to us, it is in us. So now we move like him. The Bible says that the son does what the father does. So when Jesus came to earth, he was the example of the father, of our father God in heaven, loving, caring, sacrificial. And Jesus said when he leaves, he's going to send his spirit to help us, to help us to do what he does, to help us to do what's hard for us to do. So when God sends a person to us, he sends his spirit inside of them to us to help lighten our burdens, to help show the example of his son, Jesus, to help us to love others and to love you. So again, those are the five signs plus the bonus that they are not sent by God. All right. So I hope y'all got this. I hope y'all wrote down the notes. I hope this blessed y'all. And I want to say I love y'all. I'm going to get at y'all when I get at y'all.